Hi, I'm Dwayne Goins, registered dietitian and owner of Neurotrition, where I offer nutrition and neurofeedback services. In this video, I'll be reviewing BodyLens, what it is, and how it can help you with pain management or when treating children who are sensitive or reactive. Let's get into it. BodyLens is an adaptation of Lens Low Energy Neurofeedback Systems, which was originally created as Neurofeedback for the Head or Brain. If you've watched my video, What is Lens Neurofeedback, then you know that Lens works by interrupting suppressed brain patterns and allows the brain to restructure accordingly with the feedback provided. Lens uses an EEG biofeedback device, which picks up electrical signals produced by the brain from small sensors which are attached to the scalp. The proprietary software reads the brain waves from those sites and sends the electrical signals back to your brain for processing in a modified way. With body lens, there are five disposable sensors that are snap-on and pre-gelled for ease. These are placed on parts of the body to affect change directly on a specific area, while also giving feedback to the brain in an indirect way. There is no paste or ear clips and the client does not need to close their eyes. The client can talk and act as normal in a relaxed position while the feedback is running. How exactly does body lens work? Well, the nervous system is not merely a top-down approach from the brain to the body but also a reciprocal interaction from the body to the brain. There are nerves and electrical magnetic energy that can be measured from the body directly connected to brain sites on the head. For example, as we know with psychological trauma or PTSD, a person can become stuck or paralyzed by a traumatic experience and can learn to cope with their stress by suppressing memories or emotional pain in order to be functional. But this is not the ideal state. It is a survival state. The body holds trauma in a similar way. It becomes rigid or stuck in a protective state, but this can affect muscle functioning, nerves, blood flow, digestion, and sleep. Think about tense or tight muscles from either stress or injury in the neck and shoulders and back, which can be further compounded by the subsequent experience of pain. Body lens works with the body to affect the brain and reorganize electrical patterns directly from the body. Another way of looking at it is thinking of the skin as an organ of the body, the largest one, which can affect both change internally by what it receives or be affected by what you put in the body through digestion. For example, there are many ways to tackle the problem of acne. One approach would be to look at nutritional deficiencies or gut issues that might be corrected through diet or supplements by what you ingest. Another way to tackle acne is by putting creams or medications directly on the skin. Both are treating the same condition, but through different paths that eventually connect and affect the whole. You can take a supplement orally or through the skin. And while there are differences in these approaches, of course, the analogy is that they work together. With body lens, the software will pick up electromagnetic energy or waves from the body where the sensors are placed and reflect back these to the body through the skin in a modified way. This approach is more targeted to the surface area where the sensors are placed and can be very beneficial for two distinct situations as an alternative or complement to head lens. The first is with children or highly sensitive or reactive adults and the second is for rehabilitative purposes for athletes and or those who have injuries or chronic pain. With children, body lens is a very gentle and calming experience, both clinically and practically. Children are typically more sensitive than adults and don't need as much feedback to experience changes. Some children can also have a harder time sitting still with ear clip sensors and paste on their hair and scalp. Our four-year-old daughter, Sonia, loves body lens and if given a choice, will choose body lens over head lens simply because it's easier for her and less restrictive. It is easy to apply the disposable adhesive sensors to the skin. In fact, our daughter can put the sensors on and off herself. For many of my clients with directions, they can apply the sensors to their own skin out of comfort or privacy. So if your child is highly sensitive or highly reactive, body lens might be a perfect first choice rather than head lens unless a shorter application is run on the head or until the child builds up a tolerance to head lens. In the same way, for highly sensitive or reactive adults, body lens works similarly to head lens on the feet, which I've explained in another video. Head sensors are placed on the feet to reduce the strength of the feedback. It provides less feedback and is easier for the brain to process with fewer side effects or irritation or fatigue. For children, placing the body lens sensors on the abdomen, low back, fingertips, or feet is a common approach among providers to help calm the nervous system. This is because there is a high concentration of blood vessels in the torso as well as in the feet, fingertips, head, and spine. Because these zones are rich in nerve endings, the lens promotes blood flow to these areas and allows for more nutrients to be provided to the body for healing. It is not uncommon for children to take a long nap after body lens, 
just as many adults will take a long nap after headlands. It helps decompress the body and allows for relaxation and rest. At the same time for reactive clients who are children, they might still experience some irritation temporarily, but this should resolve in 24 hours. And I found after this setback, the baseline symptoms are radically improved. I would encourage parents to take note of their child's responses and not become discouraged by any setbacks which are merely temporary. If, however, there is no change at all or only negative change, this is something that should be addressed with the lens provider to see what can be modified or adapted for better outcomes. Using body lens for pain management works similarly, but with an injury, it allows nerves that have become impaired to reboot or reset and become activated again. Because the sensors are placed on or around the area of pain, the feedback signals are sent directly to the localized area which is experiencing trauma or rigidity due to stress or injury, and it helps kickstart the healing process in that area. Body Lens is highly effective at reducing pain by decreasing swelling and increasing muscle relaxation and range of motion. It can be used along nerves, trigger points, meridian lines, acupuncture points, or general areas of pain or numbness. Your lens practitioner will surround the complaint area with sensors and run applications until a positive change is noted. If the pain moves, we remove the sensors and apply it to the new area of pain. It is not uncommon for pain to decrease in one area and re-emerge in another area during a session because there might be a further point of pain origin. Referred pain is pain generated from trigger points or hyper-irritable spots in fascia surrounding skeletal muscle. You can relieve pressure on the referred pain and find out the source of the pain is actually a trigger point area. The medical reason for this is that pain signals can jump two to three vertebrae because the dermatome is an area of the skin supplied by a single spinal nerve. These strips of skin are tied to an individual vertebrae of the spine. You might feel pain on one side of the body, but the pain's origin is on the opposite side. And this is why your lens provider might place sensors on the mirror image area where you said you had pain. In this way, there is some detective work and experimentation to see what works best for each client. Part of this detective work involves reading the maps or recordings of the electromagnetic waves through the lens software. With head lens, the dominant frequency with the highest amplitude is recorded from each brain site. But with body lens, the dominant frequency of electromagnetic energy emanating from where the sensors are placed on the body are recorded. You can track the body's responses through the amplitude of the active sensors, and there should be a general trend of amplitude downwards as symptoms improve, showing that less energy is needed in that area. Regardless of this trend in the recorded data, what matters most is that your pain decreases and you are able to resume the activities you enjoy most. I had a gentleman who was former military dealing with chronic knee pain. He had been working with PT for this particular knee on and off for a few years. During our session, we placed sensors around the knee and ran a feedback session for two minutes. At the end of our first run, the pain moved to his calf. We then reran the application with sensors placed on his calf and the pain subsequently moved to his hamstring. From there, he reported that the pain went away and it did not come back. Another client presenting with lower back pain experienced tingling in his hands and feet after one session of body lens on his lower back. The next week, he reported his back pain had disappeared, but that the pain had moved to his feet. After running body lens on his feet during that session, the pain subsided and neither the back pain nor foot pain returned. I've also had multiple clients with plantar fasciitis whose pain had gone away completely or diminished significantly. Some have reported that the pain relief feels similar to the feeling after receiving a steroid injection. I've had a client who suffered a shoulder restriction after being hit by a car as a pedestrian, and after two sessions, her range of motion in her shoulder improved by 20 degrees. I also had an 80-year-old client post-stroke who had very weak grip strength improve significantly after body lens. I measured her grip strength before and after the session using a hand grip dynamometer. I ran the body lens on her right upper extremity for a total of two minutes of feedback time, and her average grip strength improved from 20.33 to 21.66 kilograms of force on her right weak side. We repeated this several times with similar improvements each time. These are just some clinical anecdotes from my practice, and I'd be curious to know if others have cool or interesting experiences with body lens to share. Please comment below if you do. Also, if you're a provider or a client interested in learning more about body lens, you can find more detailed information from Mike Beasley's webinar online for purchase at oakslabs.com, linked below in the description box. A big thank you to him and Daphne Waldo for that seminar, which is the foundation for this video. Check out the description box for information about my practice and about where you can find a lens provider near you.
Please subscribe to support my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Hey. Ba -dum -ba -dum. Ba -dum -ba -dum. Oh, yeah. no, 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 don't break anything here. <laughs> <laughs>